Welcome to a special edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Peter Chan, and joining me is Dr. Rick Spinrad, the administrator of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, more commonly referred to as NOAA. Dr. Spinrad, welcome back to Alaska. Thank you, Peter. It's a pleasure to be here. And, you know, I guess we could start and ask, what's been your experience in Alaska? It sounds like you've been here several times. I have. My first trip was actually almost 50 years ago when I was a young college student. I came up here just to see the state. I'd heard so much about it. Rode up the Inside Passage, ended up in Haines, and then ended up in Fairbanks. Um, and then through the course of my career, I've had several opportunities to go all over the state. My last trip, in fact, was up to Utqiagvik in February because we have an observatory up there. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to see how we were doing there and what the nature of their activities was. Um, on this particular trip, I'll get to see more of the state that I haven't seen. Now, one of the newest strategic goals for NOAA is to build a climate-ready nation. Alaska is at the forefront when it comes to climate change. People in Alaska communities uh, deal with impacts of climate change every day. Mm -hmm. What does a climate-ready nation look like in Alaska? Think about being able to make decisions about things like um, what should our fisheries industry look like? Or do we need to worry about moving local communities on the coast? Or what can we expect the weather patterns will look like in 20 years or 30 years? How should we build our ports, our harbors, our roads, our airports differently now? If we have the best information about what the future will look like, we will be ready. And that's what we mean by a climate ready nation. I would go so far as to add that a lot of discussion right now about climate uh, is based on concerns about the impact on society. And, and rest assured, we should have some concerns about that. But by the same token, if we're really good at applying the best science, we can actually benefit from and prosper with that knowledge and be well positioned for the changes we're going to see due to, the, uh, due to uh, climate change. So all of that is part of what we mean by a climate ready nation. And then there's pieces of that, a coastal ready nation, an arctic ready nation, if you will, all of those environments that are going to be impacted by the changes that we're already seeing right now. How well we can we position society, individuals, corporations, <laughs> to deal with the changes that we're seeing. And I think to, to emphasize uh, to people, you know, NOAA, the Weather Service, uh, other entities, uh, we've been gathering data of the weather, of the oceans for years. We have that database, but also we're developing new tools to uh, model future changes. And this is really important as we move forward because we are helping policymakers these communities in the end, local, state, yeah. nationally, where we might need to go. And it's our mission and it's very important that the integrity of that data is good and that we base it on sound science. Absolutely. Um, and you look at every aspect of our lives. And here in Alaska, uh, one of the reasons why I felt it was so important to visit in my new capacity as no administrator is because just about every aspect of life here in the state of Alaska is going to be impacted by those kinds of changes. So obviously fisheries, uh, but also uh, you look at uh, just the way the weather patterns are going to affect river flow. You look at the way uh, where ships are going to make port. Um, Nome is a really good example if we look at how climate is going to change. How will that impact the role that Nome plays? We're expecting to see a lot more shipping in the Arctic Ocean in the future, which means there's going to be a lot more uh, demands, a lot more challenges to communities on the uh, northern part of the state on the Arc along the Arctic, uh, and also uh, impacts on uh, lifestyles associated with natural resources like the lumber industry, the timber industry, the fishing industry. So it's really important for us to make sure we're sensitive to the needs of the communities and providing the, the, the knowledge-based products that will help them make the decisions that they need to make. And emergency managers, I might add, too, because so many of the factors that we're talking about here uh, come into play when you start looking at how, uh, whether it's avalanches or landslides or fires or drought or floods, we need to be in a place where we can make much better predictions of where we expect to see those things happening. And you more or less led into my next question is, what is NOAA doing right now to help ensure communities in Alaska meet this goal of becoming climate ready? So, 
Yeah, if you have any other uh, thoughts or uh, other examples you can highlight, uh, I'd like to hear about it. So uh, a lot of examples, I mean, we're seeing in some parts of the state record-breaking precipitation going on right now. And uh, is that going to become more the norm? Are we going to see continuing uh, uh, changes in how rain and snowfall hit the state? Not just how much, but the form of the, uh, the snow or the rain in particular areas. Uh, the diminishment of uh, sea ice is, of course, affecting a lot of uh, uh, subsistence fishing and hunting. So we're working with communities that depend on uh, knowing where walrus are. We've got a product right here out of Anchorage, for example, that helps uh, the subsistence hunting community know where the uh, patterns are for haul out for walrus. We are trying to help the shipping industry by providing better sea ice forecasts both on a short-term basis and a long-term basis. Uh, we have an active tsunami warning uh, capability here in Alaska, headquartered here in Alaska. Uh, so that, that's not a climate uh, uh, change impact uh, factor, although as the coasts change, the impacts of tsunamis will change in the coasts as well. So being able to understand how the coasts are changing, how sea level is changing, um, is also part of our responsibility. And those tend to be, I mean, we do a lot of that throughout the, the country, including in the lower 48, but the unique aspects of sea ice, the unique aspect of the fisheries and how they're changing here in Alaska, the unique aspects of the impacts of sea level change to especially the coastal communities on the North Slope are particularly relevant to the population in Alaska. So climate change makes the Arctic a strategic and economic hotspot, and Alaska is what makes the U.S. an Arctic nation. Can you tell us uh, something about NOAA's Arctic initiatives? And the best way to talk about that is, again, in the context of a climate-ready nation, but also in the context of what are the responsibilities that we have. So we have a responsibility for dealing with fisheries, and fisheries are fundamentally changing here in the state. I've had the opportunity to talk with some of the major industry representatives for fisheries. So we're trying to provide good predictions and projections of how the fisheries will change, where the fish will be, if you will, in the future. We're also looking to how the Arctic itself will change. I've been having a number of discussions with Coast Guard, and I'll be talking with our colleagues uh, in, uh, in, in DOD about what is our support responsibility for what may be increased activity in the Arctic in the future as well. And then, of course, there's the, the sort of standard uh, requirement for having skillful weather forecast, and that's changing too. Even folks in the lower 48 know that what's happening here in the Arctic in terms of weather patterns is affecting weather throughout the country. So having a better understanding of the weather patterns and their predictability and improving our observational capabilities so we're launching new satellites to make even better observations here in the high latitudes in the Arctic and in Alaska specifically. Though all those tools are focused on our general set of responsibilities, but on specific challenges that we have here in Alaska and in the Arctic. And certainly we've known from research that some of the most rapid weather and climate changes are happening in the Arctic and sub-Arctic regions of the world. Yeah. Yet, and as we saw just last week with the announcement of the speed of change in sea ice and temperatures in the Arctic being, I think the number was four times faster than people expected, uh, the, the trite but relevant statement that what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic is even more relevant right now. And so we're trying to get ahead of the curve to understand, okay, if we're seeing the reduction of sea ice, if we're seeing the increased temperatures and highly variable temperatures in, in, in the Bering Sea and in the Arctic as well, what does that mean for all of these responsibilities that we have for predicting weather, for understanding fisheries, for understanding sea level rise and impacts on coastal communities? Dr. Spinrad, it's been a pleasure talking to you about all the important things happening with NOAA in Alaska. Thank you for your time and expertise. And thank you for those of you watching and joining in on this special edition of Alaska Weather Facts.